I have come to terms with the fact that I am not a great storyteller. There are many different mediums that are used to tell a story. Today, I am going to be discussing what it means to be a good storyteller in conversation and more specifically within the social media or content creator landscape, whatever you want to call it. Online storytelling, I guess. As I have embarked on my own YouTube journey, I have consistently, very deeply considered what sets apart the best creators in this space to the rest of us. Of course, there are so many factors that contribute to a creator's success, which are not relevant to this conversation, so I will not be discussing those things or bringing those things up. What makes these creators so fun and so entertaining to watch. My immediate thoughts have always been these creators are able to be very authentically themselves in a way that's really relatable. So the viewer is able to connect with the creator on a personal level. The way they present themselves on camera is not a performance. You feel as though you are their friend. I think relatability is a byproduct of authenticity because I don't think that you can be inauthentic and relatable. Like I think you need to be authentic first. If you're being fake, I feel like people can pick up on that and it won't resonate, or at least it won't last. I always thought that those were like the two main things that contribute to why certain creators are able to connect on such a personal level with their audience. But as I've been kind of creating in the YouTube space for over a year, I felt like there was another component that I wasn't quite picking up on that creators are able to tap into to make their delivery so charming and entertaining that kind of unified their authenticity and relatability and took it to the next level and that is storytelling i want to emphasize the importance of good storytelling because there are times where somebody is being authentically themselves and it's still boring like me, for example, I obviously like cannot perceive myself in the same way that other people do. So I don't know if I have the most accurate gauge to say that I'm boring or not, or if I'm entertaining or not. I'm probably also like hypercritical of myself. And I think that I'm boring even if I may not be. And also like, I'm not meant to appeal to like everybody. So some people might think I'm boring and some people might not. And so whatever. But the way that the top creators can appeal to so many people is because they are great storytellers. What sets them apart in a big way is their ability to tell a story. The way that I've always been is that I always kind of need to like gather my thoughts before I say something otherwise it just kind of comes out like a jumbled mess like even with this I have a whole outline right in front of me and you're not gonna know because I'm gonna edit this to a way that feels smooth for you to watch and listen to but I'm struggling right now when you tell a story you want to kind of be concise with it like you can't interrupt the flow of it and that's how I do it like I don't have a flow when I tell stories I I interrupt myself I give extra details that don't need to be there like there's not a structure there's likes ums buts long pauses like I'm just not a good storyteller okay I feel like especially for me when I'm trying to convey a complicated thought or emotion or idea or an experience that I've had I don't have the ability to do that in a way that's smooth and that's like pleasant for whoever it is that I'm telling the story to. When we think of all the great artists in history, ultimately their success is rooted in their ability to convey a story, feeling, or idea in a way that resonates with many people, like the masses. Being able to candidly discuss vulnerable topics, feelings, and experiences, doing this is not easy. Like being vulnerable in real life to like one other person is already hard, but 
to be vulnerable in a form of self-expression is, I want to say, even harder because you're subjecting something that you've created to be judged. But at the same time, it's also very healing, I am I know, for a lot of people. So, I don't know what my point is here, but <laughs> being able to candidly discuss vulnerable topics, feelings, and experiences creates a space for the viewer and the creator to connect. Through their storytelling, these creators are able to give their audience the feeling of validation almost because they're able to portray their vulnerability and personal life experiences in a way that makes the person watching feel like they're less alone. People say that their favorite creators, it feels like they're on FaceTime with them. I feel like the best storytellers are able to tell their story and create almost like a trance-like body of work that the person who's watching is just in their world for that amount of time. Like they're able to erase the awareness of I am watching a video right now, if that makes any sense. Like they're somehow able to create a space where the audience can get lost in their world for a second, but in a way that makes the audience feel like they're a part of their world. Where the magic really happens, I feel like, is when somebody is able to bring together authenticity, relatability, vulnerability, humor, and good storytelling all at once in a way that feels balanced and natural. I want to touch on humor a little bit because do we underestimate the power of humor? I think we do. I think especially within, I want to say the influencer space, because this is where I really see it lacking. I find that it's much easier to connect with someone when there's humor involved. I don't know, like certain influencers just feel like really two-dimensional. But then when they're funny, it's like the best creators, they have humor. Okay, moving on. Storytelling is something that has been around a long time. Right, so after my own reflection on what makes good storytelling, what I've noticed about the best creators or my favorite creators and coming to the conclusion that storytelling is the thing that pulls everything together and pushes them beyond the average creator, I was curious to see what the internet had to say about what makes good storytelling. I wanted to get a more technical perspective. And I found this article by Brian Greg Peters where he breaks down six rules of great storytelling as told by Pixar. Number one, great stories are universal. Effective storytelling involves a deep understanding of human emotions, motivations, and psychology in order to truly move an audience. What you're trying to do when you tell a story is to write about an event in your life that made you feel some particular way. And what you're trying to do when you tell a story is to get that audience to have that same feeling. Great storytelling is about taking a piece of human condition, so things like birth, growth, emotionality, aspiration, conflict, and conveying it in a unique situation. Number two, great stories have a clear structure and purpose. This is what I really wanted to know about because I feel like this is the thing that makes my storytelling bad because I don't know how to structure the stories that I want to tell. So I was really, really interested in this particular point. There's two parts to this. Part A is the structure, the story spine. Once upon a time, there was blank. Every day, blank. One day, blank. Because of that, blank. Until finally, blank. And then part B is purpose. Why must you tell this story? What greater purpose does this serve? And what does it teach? I love that. I love that, okay? Number three, great stories have a character to root for. Pixar explains that we as the audience admire a character for trying more than for their success. In other words, it's more about the character's journey than it is about their actual destination. I mean, this ties right back into my point about vulnerability. Number four, great stories appeal to our deepest emotions. Again, vulnerability. Number five, great stories are surprising and unexpected. This one's interesting. What makes modern stories compelling are when our perceptions of reality are challenged or changed in some way love that. I do agree with this a lot because I feel like the stories that resonate with me the most are when my perceptions or my beliefs 
are challenged and I get to think about something or look at something in a way that I haven't before. And I like, I love that. Like, I don't want to just constantly be confirmed my own beliefs, despite how good that might feel. And the last thing is great stories are simple and focused. This is also something that I feel like I struggle with in particular. Point number two and Point number six are the things that I feel like I lack when I'm trying to tell a story, which my stories are not simple and they are not focused. (laughs) My friend has this joke about when somebody asks me a question, I need to start from the day that I was born in order to feel like I've answered the question in its completion. You know, like that's not necessary. Like I don't need to fucking start from the day I was fucking born. Like I don't need to start from the beginning. I don't know how to like focus a story and make it simple and straightforward and easy to digest. The best creators, they have the ability to take their own personal experiences and speak about them candidly, which you as the audience connects with because we're all humans. We're all living in the human condition and as much as we may feel alone sometimes, the reality is we're not. There is always something that we can relate to with one another. The best creators are amazing at being able to tap into that vulnerability and conveying it in a simple and focused, clear and concise, structured way with purpose. They're able to take all of these things and like put them into one. I think there's also something to be said about being articulate or well-spoken. This is also something that I've really thought about because I do not think that I am a very articulate person. Since I left college, I feel like I have not been able to be as articulate because I'm not using my brain in the same way that I was when I was in college. When you're in college, you are constantly writing essays, you're constantly reading, your brain is just being challenged in a different way. I remember when I was in college, I was very articulate. I was a psych major, so I was writing a lot of essays. I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody in college writes a lot of essays anyways, but I had a very essay heavy major and I've not always been a naturally good writer, but as I wrote more and more essays, writing became really natural for me because I was exercising that part of my brain and I was doing it so much. And I actually really ended up loving writing because I felt like I was able to convey a thought or an argument that I had in my head in a way that felt concise. I'm two years out of college now and I've noticed that since I have not been using my brain in the same way, my speech is much less articulate. I feel like my brain can't choose the right words for what it is that I want to say, and I end up saying a lot more in a less elegant way. Like, it's a skill to be able to use the right words in the right context to be able to convey something concisely and accurately without using that many words. I don't know what this might be related to, but sometimes I will like forget what I'm trying to say in the middle of me trying to say it. And so I just never end up completing a thought or a point. So yeah, anyway, the point is like, I don't think I'm as articulate as I used to be and I think a really crucial part of storytelling is being able to articulate something in a very concise way. What does it mean to be articulate? Having a good vocabulary is so important in being able to convey something. I keep using the word convey, like I feel like I need to look up a synonym for convey because that is literally how I grew my vocabulary when I was in college because When I was writing essays, I only had like one word that I felt like encapsulated the idea that I was trying to get across. And so what I would do was I would learn how to use synonyms for that one word. And that helped me develop my vocabulary and the skill to be able to use more accurate words to better accurately communicate my idea. Being articulate will take storytelling to another level because you're removing all the extraneous details that don't necessarily need to be there and that is also something that I struggle with which is 
I tend to over explain things, which causes me to invite all this. I'm going to look up another synonym for extraneous because I just use that word and I want another word. When you're over explaining things, you're then bringing in all this extra irrelevant detail that ends up taking away from the story. Being articulate allows you to explain what needs to be explained and leave out things that don't need to be there. The tendency to over explain comes from the desire to be understood in the way that you would like to be understood. There can be a gap between conveying an idea in a particular way and someone's interpretation of it. And so I feel like to compensate people over explain, or I know that's what I do. I over explain certain things because I feel like the more details I give, the more the other person is going to be able to accurately interpret what it is that I am saying. But in reality, it ends up just taking away from the story. And I think that's a part of the beauty of storytelling, which is there's room for interpretation because then that's where the imagination comes from. And that's what makes storytelling so fun because people can fill in the blanks and relate to your story in their own way. Over explaining almost paints the picture a little bit too vividly to the point where somebody cannot bring themselves into the story. T. I think that's all I got. I feel like this was a jumbled fucking mess. I made an outline for this and it felt like a decent outline, but it act I feel like it kind of like steered me away. Like I feel like there are a bunch of thoughts that I've had that I didn't complete. What was the point of this? To just establish what makes good storytelling yes that it that was the point of this for me to learn what makes good storytelling yes that was the point of this but somehow i feel unsatisfied i feel like i told this story poorly also most likely i will be editing this and watching it back and realize that i forgot to say a bunch of shit and will be inserting clips to complete my thoughts. This thought really came about when I was creating my Am I Boring video, which is the video before this one. I had the idea to make a video about whether or not I was boring. And as I was making it, I was doing a lot of reflecting on whether or not I'm actually boring. And the conclusion that I came to was that I'm boring in certain ways because I'm not good at telling stories. And so if I want to be a little bit more interesting, I guess, I can strengthen the muscle that is storytelling. All that being said, I'm pooped. <laughs> I am pooped. I thought I was going to have a lot more to say about this, but um, I don't. Hopefully you got something out of this. Hopefully this was helpful in one way or another. Hopefully it was not too boring. Love you so much. Thank you so much for spending your time here for listening. I have a really busy April. I don't think I'm going to be able to get a video up next week, which really sucks. But also, I don't think anybody gives a fuck. I don't think anybody's going to notice. I just want to keep you in the loop. I have gone back to work, which sucks. I don't think I'm going to last very long, honestly. Um, and I'm going to Hawaii next week. <laughs> and I have a birthday this weekend. I'm doing this over like flea market this weekend as well. Love you. See you next time. I always get really nervous before I start recording like a podcast where I'm just sitting down and talking. I don't know why. I don't wear glasses or need glasses, but I ha I got these glasses off of Giant Vintage and they look horrible in person, but they look kind of fine online, hopefully, like virtually. And I feel like this is kind of the vibe for the topic of today's podcast. So we're just gonna commit to the glasses. If they look silly, whatever. <clears throat> okay.